Hey guys, welcome back. It is day five, and the first thing we're gonna do is open NetBeans, per usual. And today we're gonna talk about loops. They're similar to if statements, but a little bit different. The first loop we're gonna talk about is a while loop. And we used this last time in our code to continuously play the guess the number game, but we're gonna use it a bit differently today. Basically what it is, is a control flow statement that allows code to be executed repeatedly based on a given condition. And so if the condition's true, then a certain block of code will be executed and then it'll go back up. Oh, is it still true? If it is, then it'll continue to do the code and go back up again eventually. But if it's not true, it'll act kind of like an if statement and skip the block of code and continue to the rest of the function. So you can kind of think of it as a repeating if statement. Basically, it just consists of a block of code and then a condition saying, do I still do this code or do I move on to the rest of the program? So to get started, we are going to implement this and we are going to close our guess the number because we are going to implement a different program. And so we're going to do control click and close this up. You can keep it there if you wanted to, but kind of messy. I don't want it there. So we'll do file, new project. We'll create our new thing. And this is basically just going to help us practice with loops. And so we have our Java application here. We'll call this loop practice and we'll put it on the desktop. Again, if you want it somewhere else, browse is your button to choose and we'll go finish for now. And here we are. Today, we are gonna create a while loop, a for loop and a do while loop within certain functions. And so to create a function, we hit enter here. We're gonna create an instance method, instance function. Here we go. So we're gonna write public void, we're not returning anything, we are basically just going to print stuff out with our loops. And those are just repeating if statements, like I said before. So we have public void, the name of our function will be practice while loop, loop, and we will open close friends, and then open close curly brackets. And inside of here, we will write our while loop. So the first thing we're going to do is create a variable, we're going to do the data type, int, we'll call this variable x, and we'll initialize it, so we'll do assignment zero. And so now we have this variable x zero. Then we're gonna say while, keyword while, then we'll do open paren x less than five, the paren automatically closed, then do another curly brackets, hit enter, curly brackets. So here we have our keyword while that says while this condition right here in the parens is true, we are gonna do this statement of code. There's nothing in the statement of code, so let's add something, we'll say, System.out.println, open paren, the value of x is, and then we'll add our value of x right here, then do semicolon, and then we'll add x equals x plus 1 and increment x. Instead of doing x equals x plus 1, we could actually just do x plus plus because that will increment x for us. So now what's going to happen in this function is we'll initialize our variable x to 0. We'll say while x is less than 5, so we'll have 0 less than 5 at first. We'll print out the value of x, which will be 0 at first, and then we'll increment x by 1. So x will now be 1. We'll go back to the top here. While x is 1, 1 is less than 5, so we'll print it out again. We'll increment. We'll get x2. 2 is less than 5. We'll keep going. 3 is less than 5. 4 is less than 5, and then when we get to while 5 is less than 5, it will break out of this and continue down here to whatever code may be here. So it should print out the value is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then when it gets to 5, it will break out of this. Now to run it, we have to add something here. We'll make this function static, so we can just call it right here, not create an instance, practice while loop. This will call it, we will press play, and down here we have the value of x is 0, the value of x is 1, 2, 3, 4, and it stopped at 5 because the condition up here was no longer true. When this condition is true, the block is executed. When it is not true, the block is ignored, and we continue down to whatever is down here. So the reason we might call this a repeating if statement is because we have x is less than 5. That is our repeating if statement because we do if 0 is less than 5, 1 is less than 5, we continuously do that and we do the same block of code. You would do an if statement here if you wanted on different conditions to do different things. So we could do if is even x and then test if it's even, do something then, or if it's odd, do something else. But in this case, no matter what, if x is less than 5, we want to print the same thing out. Now let's move on to another loop. 
we have something called a do while loop. And basically what happens is it does the block of code first and then checks for a condition. Sounds kind of abstract. Let's just implement things. So we'll create another instance method, another function, and we'll write public. We'll make this static as well so we don't have to make an instance of our loop practice. We just want to do it right here. And we'll do void as our return type, practice do while loop, open close paren, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And again, we'll do int x equals zero. And we'll say do open curly bracket, close the curly bracket, and then we'll put while down here. And then we'll do our condition x is less than, and here we'll say 10. And we do have to have a semicolon here. And so we have do this block of code while x is less than 10. So what's gonna happen? Well, we'll add system.out.println in here, and we'll say the value of x is plus x. And then we'll add x plus plus to increment x again. And now what will happen is our do here will work and we will print out the value of x, we'll increment it, and then we'll check the value of x. Okay, is it less than 10? If so, do the do again. Otherwise, just continue on with the rest of the code, whatever's down here. So we'll take away down here in our main, we'll change this to practice do while loop. So let's run it and see what happens. We'll press play. It printed from zero to nine. So we did int x equals zero. Then we had the system print out the value of x is zero. We incremented it. Then we said is one less than 10? No, it's not. So we keep doing it. Then we get to print the value of eight, increment it, nine is less than 10, do it again, we print the value of nine down here, then we increment it, then we say 10 is less than 10, that's not true, and so we broke out of the do while and the function ended. Now you might be wondering why the x up here doesn't mess with the x down here. They're both the same variable name, but why aren't they associated in any way? Well, it has to do with something called scope. Here, in the scope of our function between these two curly brackets, that's where x lives. x cannot be out here or out here because it only lives inside of these two curly brackets. It was created in here, and so that is the only place it can be accessed. Hence, that also means it can be accessed inside the do because the do here is inside these two curly brackets. We'll talk about this a little bit more later, but that's kind of the general idea of scope. If it's created within a set of curly brackets, anything inside of that, it can be accessed within, but anything outside of this, it cannot be accessed. So let's do our last loop, a for loop. And we'll create another function for this, and we'll say public static void practice for loop. And this is another kind of loop, another kind of repeating if statement, except it does the incrementing for us. What does that mean? Well, let's just mess with it here. We don't have to create our int x up here because it does that for us. And like I said before, it does the incrementing for us. So let's just write it out. We'll do for int x equals zero, semicolon, x is less than, here we'll say 20, semicolon, x plus plus and we'll do open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and this is our for loop. We'll add some more stuff inside. We'll do system.out.println, the value of x is, and then again, do our plus x to show what our value is. So here, basically what it does, it has a for loop. It creates our int right here, and it says, if x is less than 20, then keep doing what's in the for loop, but increment it as well. So what happens is we initialize x here, we say is zero less than 20, yes it is, we print out the value of zero, then we increment it, is one less than 20, okay it is, then we print it out again, we do that all the way up to 20, is 20 less than 20, no it's not, so then we exit out of this, and then if there's any code down here, we execute, but there isn't, so that's the end. But we can add something here, we could do system.out.println, this is the end and this will only be executed once the for loop has exited. So we'll change our do while to for here, and we will access that, we will play, and notice we have zero all the way up to 19. It doesn't do 20 because we have the strict less than sign. If we did less than and equal, then it would work, but it's not that, so only up to 19 gets printed. Then we have this is the end because we're done. Now we could add an if statement here and actually break the loop before 
it's completed its course. So we could say if x is equal to say 10, then we can break and we can stop the loop and exit it right there. How do we do this? Well, let's just hit play and see what happens. Okay, so it continuously checked up to 10. If it said 10 is less than 20, so we'll print this out. Then here in our if we had 10 equals 10, so we broke from the loop and the method is ended because there's nothing else besides the for loop. Now this doesn't just work for incrementing x. We could actually do decrementing minus minus here and then say if it's greater than zero and then change our starting value to be 10 to reverse this whole function. And we'll take away this if. So now what'll happen is x will start at 10, 10 is greater than zero, then we will print out 10 and then it will decrement 10 to nine. Again, it will go through and then when x is one, it'll keep doing it. When x is zero, it won't print out the value of zero and it will end. So let's play it. And now we have the value starting at 10 and going all the way down to one and not zero. The last thing we're gonna talk about today are nested for loops. And so if we go up here, we have a for loop here, but we can actually put another for loop inside of this. We could go for int y equals zero while y is less than, I don't know, 10, then we'll do y plus plus. And then we'll do open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and now we have a for loop within our for loop. You can actually do this to have coordinate systems print out in your console. What does that mean? Well, let's just write some code. So let's have our int x be zero, and let's have it go to 10 as well. Then we'll have x plus plus, and then inside of our y for loop, our nested for loop, we can do system.out.println. Then we can say open parenthesis and then do plus x, then have a comma here, then plus y, and then close our parenthesis here. So what this will print out if we add our semicolon, and then we need to change this. So what does that mean? Well, we'll have our for loop here, x will be zero, zero will be less than 10, we'll go to our y, y will be zero, y will be less than 10, and we'll print out zero, zero. Then we have to continue this for loop until it's done before we can do this outer for loop again. What does that mean? Well, we'll do zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, y will be continuously incremented until it gets to 10, and then this block of code will be done. So if there was anything down here, it would be executed, but there's not. And so it will just go to this closing curly bracket. It'll go back up to the R4. X will be incremented by one, and then we'll have one is less than 10. And then we'll have this whole series of one, zero, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, all the way up to one, nine. Again, this will finish, and then we'll get X equals two. And then we'll have two, zero, two, one, et cetera, until we end up getting nine, nine. And that is when the whole method will terminate because the inner for loop will be done executing and the outer loop will be done because x will equal 10 at that final increment. Phew, okay, so let's see this in action. We'll have our practice for loop here. We will play and look at that. We have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, all the way up to 9, 9. Pretty neat. So in this video, we talked about while, do while, and for loops. They're all very similar. They're all control flow statements that allow code to be executed repeatedly given a certain condition. The for loops increment it for us and give us a variable, while and do while don't. They are all kind of like repeating if statements, constantly asking if a certain value is less than another value or a certain condition like that. They consist of a condition and then a block of code that's to be executed if that condition is true. And so that's it for this video. The Hacker Rank Challenge is down below in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. I hope you learned something and I will see you tomorrow.